Conceived by Japanese celebrity Shigesato Itoi, the Mother Trilogy of video games is notorious for, among many other things, its eclectic, reference-laden soundtracks. Scores of artists the world over and throughout the ages have left their impact on the music of the franchise, be they as sources of inspiration, subjects of pastiche and homage, or even collaborators on official soundtrack releases. To shine a light on this music's interesting trivia is the primary purpose of the iceberg. I will therefore be discussing such topics as sound samples, related musical acts, and lesser known tracks. The other reason I created the chart was to introduce or otherwise raise interest in the various musicians, which is why certain entries will conclude with recommendations from their respective discographies. Some of these records have been directly cited as influences, others are the creator's best-selling or most emblematic albums, while others still were selected for miscellaneous noteworthy reasons. I think there's something here for everyone. Please don't take offense if your favorite act is not talked about for as long as another. It is not a reflection of my thoughts on the quality of their work. Certain topics require longer explanations to demonstrate their connection to the franchise, especially those the audience is less likely to be familiar with. I must also apologize if any information is poorly conveyed. Some of this iceberg's entries were informed by untranslated interviews on Itoi's Hobonichi website. Some nuance is bound to have been lost in translation when we rely upon machine translation services. Lastly, I would like to credit those who have researched and documented the franchise's musical connections. It would have been infinitely harder to compile this information without their contributions to the fandom. Thanks go to... Clyde Mandolin for his translation comparisons on Legends of Localization and in his book on Earthbound. How is this a name for their video on Mother 3's musical references? I want to believe for their video on samples used in Earthbound. Leo for their Starman.net thread on the vocal album and Mario's 3 centimeters of hairline for their Japanese videos on Mother 2. Further thanks go to YouTubers Diverse Multiverse and Moon Saigon for additional footage, as well as the staff at The Cutting Room Floor and Mother Forever. And of course, I thank all the musicians whose work can be heard throughout this video. Keiichi Suzuki Keiichi Suzuki, born August 28, 1959, is best known to Mother fans as one of the composers for the first two games. Starting as a sideman in 1970, the Japanese musician has gone on to acquire a lengthy history of producing albums, film scores, and even commercial jingles. Before forming a certain other band covered later in this iceberg, Suzuki's band Hachimitsu Pai pioneered Japanese language rock at a time when many Japanese musicians thought rock ought to be sung in English. His influences span the vast gamut of mid-20th century rock music, from the surf rock of the Beach Boys to the art rock of XTC. Additionally, Suzuki has provided vocals and instrumentation for both Mother One albums. Hip Tanaka Hirokazu Hip Tanaka, born December 13, 1957, is the other primary composer for the first two Mother games. Currently the president of Creatures Incorporated, he joined Nintendo in 1980 as a sound designer and is responsible for the soundscapes of several classic games. Those die-hard fans of the Pokémon anime among you may also recognize him as the composer of the original Japanese opening and many other songs. Some of Tanaka's favorite genres are reggae, dub, and hip-hop, whose techniques have directly inspired his own approach to making music. Shogo Sakai Shogo Sakai, born September 23, 1960, is the sole composer of Mother 3. Initially a member of the now-defunct Data East, he has worked under HAL Laboratory since 1996, producing some of the most iconic arrangements featured in the Super Smash Bros. franchise. His first composing credit at HAL was actually going to be on Earthbound 64, but any Mother fan worth their salt knows how that ended. A number of game music concerts in Japan have been organized by Sakai, a few even conducted. The Beatles I am assuming that this audience was not born yesterday, so I will not waste time with an introduction. Shigesato Itoi is notoriously a big fan of the Beatles, whose influence can be felt all throughout the Mother franchise. In fact, the topic of Mother's connections to the Fab Four can make for its own iceberg. I will only list a few examples. 
the conspicuous yellow submarine inside Dungeon Man, a set of default names in the Japanese version of Earthbound, Revolution 9 serving as an inspiration for Gigas' music, and of course, the franchise partially deriving its name from John Lennon's mother. When it comes to this franchise, it's hard to tell whether or not something is a deliberate Beatles reference. I once saw someone claim that Queen Mary is named after the RMS Queen Mary, upon which Paul McCartney celebrated the release of Venus and Mars. I think this might be a stretch. The Beach Boys Jumping across the pond, we have The Beach Boys, the Californian band renowned for their vocal harmonization and musical innovation. Much like the Beatles, the Beach Boys have had a sizable impact on the series' music, with perhaps the most well-known example being... According to an interview with Suzuki and Tanaka, Smiley Smile's percussion techniques are stated to have massively influenced Suzuki's compositions. Earlier in said interview, Tanaka recalls even receiving a Beach Boys album from Itoi as a reference point. Classical music Compared to more modern genres, much of what we call classical music is in the public domain. As such, the Mother series has not shied away from spoofing or outright quoting various classical compositions. This is particularly true of the third game. One of the most memorable instances is the usage of Eric Satie's Gymnopédie No. 1 during Leader's speech. Then there is the smorgasbord of musical pieces crammed into the fights against Mr. and later Lord Passion, ranging from Vivaldi Spring to Bach's Toccata and Fugue. Shostakovich likewise sees his fifth symphony and sixth symphony respectively imitated by Audacious March An unfounded revenge. Outside of Mother 3, further references include a snippet of Dvorak's New World Symphony played by a trumpeter in Onette. And Beginnings is Game Over music, which sounds remarkably similar to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Humoresque of a Little Dog, Pollyanna, and Snowman. I'm grouping these three together because they are iconic songs that appear in each Mother game. Humoresque of a Little Dog serves as the shop theme of the first two games. And is playable on Porky's Jukebox in the third. Pollyanna debuted as the Overworld theme when traveling alone. With a slower arrangement playing in Ness's home. and a livelier arrangement playing in the Hall of Memories. <music> Lastly, Snowman is a theme associated with snowy environments, and as such can be heard in Anna's hometown of the same name,
the Snowwood Boarding School. And Snowcap Mountain. All three songs have also made their way into Smash. Official Albums Over the years, a handful of official mother albums have been released. In 1989, Suzuki and Tanaka released the first album simply entitled Mother, often referred to as the vocal album. This is undoubtedly the most famous of the bunch. Earthbound saw a soundtrack album shortly after its release. Although several songs from the game are missing from the album, it does feature a few remixes. Next, we have the Mother 1-2 original soundtrack, which, counterintuitively, consists solely of arrangements of tracks from the first two games. Two albums were created for Mother 3, coming out about a few months from one another. Mother 3 Plus is split between tracks performed by live instruments and those which are entirely synthesized, whereas Mother 3i consists of remastered selections from the original soundtrack. Recently, Keiichi Suzuki produced Mother Music Revisited, which breathed new life into the songs from the original vocal album. Okay, ska? Itoi can be heard asking, Okay, Deska, is this okay? when selecting OK on the naming menu in the second and third games. Okay, this clip was recorded by Tanaka without Itoi's knowledge. The Runaway Five are equivalents to the Blues Brothers. One of the most beloved acts to come from SNL, the Blues Brothers are the creations of comedians John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. The popularity of the band's blues performances gave rise to various albums and two films, one of which Itoi attests to having impacted the franchise. The Runaway Five is a blatant send-up to the Blues Brothers, this being even more obvious in the Japanese version, in which Lucky and Nice's clothes are black. Sound Battle Combos In Mother 3, it is possible to land up to 16 consecutive hits if you press A in time with the beat. This can only be executed with standard attacks, but the sound battle system spiced up battles and provided players with a way to deal more damage without wasting psychic points or items. Alien Leitmotifs There are two infamous leitmotifs in Earthbound soundtrack lacking consistent names amongst the fandom. The more prevalent of the two, a theremin-like riff, can often be heard while fighting enemies and traversing caves. The other leitmotif is a distinct drumbeat that is largely relegated to areas where alien activity is highly concentrated. These motifs could be indicative of Gigas' influence. Curiously enough, the Thurman Riff actually reappears in Mother 3. Update. Wheel Able recently identified the presence of the drumbeat's rhythm in the Pink Cloud Shrine's background music. I will link their tweet in the description, so be sure to check it out. Beat it. One of superstar Michael Jackson's best-selling songs, this hard rock hit from 1982 is famous the world over. Its instantly identifiable guitar work is spoofed by Natural Killer Cyborg. <laughs> Boris's Cocktail Sampling Upon entering Jackie's bar- I mean, <clears throat> Jackie's Cafe, the player is accosted by this delirious tune. <music> Boris's cocktail samples both the Star Spangled Banner <music> and the Little Rascals theme, Good Old Days.
If you're wondering about the name of the track, Jackie's name in Mother 2 is Borges, from Argentine writer Jorge Luis Borges. Really, it should be Borges' cocktail, but I digress. Catherine Warwick For Mother fans, Catherine Warwick is the most famous of the singers featured on the vocal album. Only 14 years old at the time of recording, Warwick provided lead vocals for Pollyanna and Wisdom of the World, and sang a duet on Being Friends. She is known to have released a couple more songs into the mid-90s and is currently believed to have become a music teacher and concert accompanist. Dallas Rag Dallas Rag was first recorded in 1927 by the Dallas String Band, led by master mandolinist Coley Jones. Not only is this piece the band's most famous tune, but it is also considered to be a staple and emblem of string band instrumentals. The success of Dallas Rag led to numerous covers over the decades, one of which must have reached the composers of Mother at some point. Case in point, Humoresque of a Little Dog sounds nearly identical to the string band classic. The DCMC are equivalents to ACDC. The music group seen throughout Mother 3 most likely derives its name from Australian rock band ACDC. The name could also be a nod to hip-hop group Run DMC, famous for bridging the gap between rap and rock with their cover of Walk This Way. Diamond Dog the 8th Sanctuary Guardian's final form overtly references David Bowie's 1974 album Diamond Dogs. While on the subject of Bowie, some fans claim that his hit single Starman is the namesake of Gigas' main henchman. Grateful Dead Valley This is the Japanese name of Peaceful Rest Valley, which is ironically one of the most stressful areas in Earthbound. The Grateful Dead, one of the great icons of 60s counterculture, is renowned for popularizing live jam sessions and for its devout fanbase of deadheads. You have probably seen their logo countless times, even if you haven't realized it. I miss you. As Smiles and Tears comes to a close, the player is dealt another emotional blow from this soundbite. Its voice belongs to Keiichi Suzuki himself. Jaws theme. The suspenseful main theme for Jaws, composed by the legendary John Williams, persists in its fame to this day. Shogo Sakai paid tribute to this theme with Formidable Foe, which plays while fighting the Oso Snake, a similarly aquatic beast. Johnny Be Good, THE rock and roll song. Chuck Berry's 1958 hit is spoofed by the hippie battle music heard in the first two games. Moonside Swing Sampling Moonside's theme samples the intro of Keep On Laughin', which was released in 1986 by Rick Ocasek of Cars fame. With lyrics like, You gotta keep on laughing, laughing, laughing in the dark, and, But you never had a dream like this before. It is a most apropos song to integrate. Mother 3 Leitmotifs Mother 3 soundtrack is notable for its abundance of leitmotifs that develop and intersect over the course of the game. The most prominent of these motifs are the love theme and the pig mask theme, largely thanks to Super Smash Bros., but most all of them are recognizable to Mother fans. I have linked two resourceful documentations of the soundtrack's leitmotifs in this video's description, although the latter website is in Japanese. Mr. Batty Twist This popular battle theme both pays homage to the 60s Batman theme,
and potentially references The Phantom of the Opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber. In sleep he sang to me, in dreams he came. That voice which calls to me and speaks my name. Super Mario Belchers a snippet of the ground theme from Super Mario Brothers can be heard in Battle Against Belch. Tequila Another classic that came out in 1958, the famous Champ song is homaged by Battle Against a Weak Opponent. Welcome to the Machine. I've included this entry so that no one complains about its absence in the comments. Allegedly, the whirring sounds of machinery heard in Belch's factory are directly inspired by Pink Floyd's Welcome to the Machine. The Who. As an icon of the first British invasion, this rock band out of London has managed to persist in the public conscience. Three travel songs across the second and third installments pay tribute to their beloved tune, Won't Get Fooled Again. Another nod to the band appears in Mother 3, when Lucas checks a wanted poster outside the sheriff's office. The Who and their signature, My Generation, are name-dropped tongue-in-cheek on said poster. This reference is actually a concession made by Clyde Mandolin, but more on that later. Your Name Please Sampling The track that plays on Earthbound's naming menu samples the Liberty Bell as heard in Monty Python's Flying Circus. Twentieth Century Fox. I would be surprised if any viewers haven't seen the American Film Studios production logo. Its accompanying fanfare is seemingly parodied in, Isn't this such a utopia? Arcade Sampling The ambiance of the Onet's arcade uses sound effects from real-life arcade games. Space Invaders Sheriff Space Firebird And Xevious Meanwhile, at New Pork City's Arcade 1-Up, it seems that the patrons are enjoying Versus Excitebike. In addition to Space Invaders.
Please let me know in the comments if there were any games I missed. Baron Factory Players who revisit the Claymast Factory during Chapter 7 are greeted by this haunting track, which appropriately uses the melody of Tragic Reconstruction. The narrative does not incentivize you to return here at said point in Mother 3, and many people do not think to do so as a result. The music, visuals, and obscure nature of this scene all serve to reinforce the game's condemnation of the exploiting and throwing away of things. Because I Love You Remixes As most Mother fans know, the Foresight theme is a salsa-inspired cover of the post-final boss music. This is possibly a nod to the Big Apple's history as a hub for salsa musicians. Fewer fans, however, might immediately pick up on the presence of another remix and Earthbound soundtrack. Tanaka's love of Jamaican music is on full display with I Want to Be Called a Great Doctor, a dub version of Because I Love You. The composer assigned it the role of the hospital theme due to being unable to find a more appropriate context. Bicycle Theme Spinning Pedals was conceived by Suzuki well before Earthbound's production and is his favorite track in the game. A Japanese strategy guide published by Kodansha includes lyrics of the song, an English translation of which has been linked to in the description. Deck the Halls Just before winter's white looms, this icon of the Christmas Carol pantheon is quickly quoted, adding to the wintry atmosphere of the track's locale. <music> Flying Man Theme Origin Due to Flying Man's status as a beloved song amongst the fanbase, one might assume that it originates from one of the games the Flying Men appear in. While portions of the Flying Man theme can be heard in Earthbound soundtrack, namely in The Jolly Flying Man, and A Bad Dream, It actually debuted on Beginnings' vocal album. The song's absence from the first game proper might be a result of time constraints or technical limitations. Good Morning Variations The waking up music in Earthbound has variants for winters Moonside and Scaraba. Hiroshi Kanazu, one of the lesser known composers for Earthbound. I could barely find any information on the man, although it seems he currently presides over one World King Studio. He is credited with composing music heard in Summers and Scaraba. M.D. Seeger That name is a pseudonym for Shigeru Miyamoto, whose wailing guitar can be heard on the War Against Gigas screen. He might have also provided the sample for Gigas is Fatally Wounded But I can't be sure. The Moon Riders 
The Moon Riders, founded in 1975, are a prolific Japanese rock band under the helm of none other than Keiichi Suzuki. With over 20 studio albums under their belts, the band's eclectic discography has impacted dozens of artists in their native country. Although the Moon Riders declared an indefinite hiatus in 2011, the year of their last album, it was announced that activity was resumed in the August of 2020. I highly recommend giving them a listen, even if you cannot understand Japanese. Mother 1 Songs in Mother 2 Even ignoring tracks I mentioned earlier in this iceberg, quite a few more from the first game are remixed or quoted in the second. Battle with a Dangerous Foe Become Sanctuary Guardian. The original level up music. Becomes the power. Monkey Cave is quoted in High High High. The topic of recurring musical themes in the Mother series could make for a smaller iceberg. My Bloody Valentine The Irish band that pioneered shoegazing was credited by Hip Tanaka with influencing the flickering quality of Earthbound soundtrack. They've got this guitar playing constant, unstable mixed noise, almost like a racket, lyrics that seem to fade away, and a pounding rhythm. I love it, I love it, I love it. My Bloody Valentine was also cited to be among the influences on Gigas' background music. Nirvana inspired Porky Means Business. Specifically the track's percussion when it really gets going. Kurt Cobain significantly affected Tanaka's life as a musician, to the point where he could confidently divide his discography into the categories pre-Nirvana and post-Nirvana. Prince Full name Prince Rogers Nelson, this artist out of Minneapolis was a virtuoso in the truest sense of the word. Tanaka likened Prince's blending of various genres to that of Earthbound's multifaceted soundtrack, and lists him amongst the influences of the game's occasional funky bass phrases and rhythms. Randy Newman This singer-songwriter is best known for his simultaneously sentimental and satirical tunes, as well as his film compositions. If you know Pixar, you know his work. Newman was discussed incredibly early into the production of Beginnings. Tanaka recalls wanting to incorporate the artist's distinctly American chord progressions and arrangements. Rock Lobster While traversing the seafloor dungeon off the coast of Cerulean Beach, you may come across a certain crustaceous foe. Simply identified as a crayfish in the Japanese release of Mother 3, the fan translation rechristened this enemy Rock Lobster, a tribute to the signature song of the B-52s. SMAP Active from 1988 to 2016, SMAP is the most successful boy band in Japanese history. To say that these guys are a really big deal there is a grave understatement. They have had a ubiquitous presence over Japan. What's relevant to this iceberg is the appearance of the band member's name as don't care options in Mother 2. Additionally, Takuya Kimura has starred in magazine ads and TV commercials for the game. A sound effect that plays during various plot points in Earthbound, typically when something foreboding is said. For instance, it first appears as Liar Exaggerate invites Ness to check out his discovery later. 
When you hear this jingle, pay attention. Toshiyuki Ueno, the other lesser-known Earthbound composer. Credited for additional music, he was on the game's sound staff and team of programmers. Ueno evidently did similar work for the 1993 Monopoly game, which was co-developed by Ape Incorporated. Shigesato Itoi is an avid Monopoly fan, after all. Unsettling Preserve This track becomes the new theme of the Sunshine Forest after the time skip. It's not available in the sound player, but you'll have plenty of time to listen to it while hunting for black beanlings. Unused Mother 2 Cave Theme This would be lower on the iceberg were it not so infamous. The nightmarish arrangement of beginnings is underground theme. The Water's Great Variation Mother 3's final dungeon has a unique variant of the Hot Spring theme, which itself is a slower rendition of Open Sesame Tofu. Akikoyano. Sometimes referred to as Japan's Kate Bush, Akikoyano should be a standout name for those with even a passing knowledge of the artsier side of Japanese music. The singer-songwriter happens to be good friends with Shigesatsu Itoi, who has penned lyrics for a number of her songs. One such song, 1987's Furi Mukeba Kaidu, became the inspiration for Save Frogs. Baby Elephant Walk. This playful piece of incidental music was written by Henry Mancini for the film Hatari and is alluded to by Mischievous Blues. Burt Bacharach. You've heard of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, now get ready for Six Degrees of Burt Bacharach. He is the musical mastermind behind countless songs across radio, film, television, and theater from the mid-20th century. A pillar of the easy listening genre, Bacharach was paid homage to by the summer's theme, according to a toy. El Bimbo. Earthbound's hotel theme is a pastiche of Bimbo Jet song El Bimbo, specifically Paul Maria's instrumental arrangement of it. Mario was a French composer, conductor, and Japanophile who held upwards of 800 concerts in Japan during his lifetime. It's worth noting that El Bimbo is called Olive Necklace in that country, which is why the hotel theme's official title can be translated as South Sea Pearl Necklace. Frank Zappa's Mother Concert This hypothetical concert, imagined by Hip Tanaka, sadly never took place on account of Frank Zappa's untimely death in 1993. Given Tanaka's musical tastes, it's no wonder he gave such high praise to the visionary who commanded great talent in genre blending and experimentation. 
If I could have someone perform a live arrangement of a motif based on original melodies, like the Mother 2 title music or Castrol at the end of the game, with the tune switched up, if Zappa were still alive? I'd absolutely love to ask him and his band to arrange and perform those two songs. Of course, I'd be at the rehearsals to watch, and I'd be in the second or third row from the front to enjoy the performance. Frankie Goes to Hollywood The 80s band that wants you to RELAX Itoi confirmed during an Earthbound stream in 2013 that Frank Fly's name is derived from Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Giant Steps Released in 1960, this album is the work of one of the most revered names in jazz, John Coltrane. Although it could just be a coincidence, I think there's a good chance that Giant Steps is the namesake of Giant Step, the first Your Sanctuary. Godzilla March As Godzilla continues to make waves in the West, his associated leitmotifs will grow ever more recognized. The introduction to film composer Akira Ifukube's iconic march is quoted note for note in Enter the Pig Masks. Is anyone there? Another often overlooked piece within Mother 3's gargantuan soundtrack. After the time skip, this track plays inside the twins' house. Jeb Million Milne Jeb Milne, sometimes known by his stage name Jeb Million, is the lead singer on the Paradise Line from the vocal album. Born Gerald Milne, the Canadian musician performed for obscure rock band Fury, later Blazer Blazer, from 1976 to 1980, before forming the Broadway Brats, which disbanded later that year. The following decade saw Milne release synth-pop singles, become a musical ghostwriter, and found the animation studio behind the music video for Counting Crows' Accidentally in Love. His greatest legacy, however, was The Wit's End, a respected live music venue in Venice, LA. In 2013, Jeb Milne sadly passed away, but he is remembered fondly for his contributions to the live music scene in West Los Angeles. Lieber Tango Infusing tango with elements of jazz and classical music, the genre of Nuevo Tango was pioneered by Argentine composer Astor Piscola. Defying traditional expectations of tango, his 1974 piece Lieber Tango marked a turning point in his career and the popularity of the budding genre. Shogo Sakai sent up Piazzolla's classic with the battle song and El Mariachi, which defies expectations by not being mariachi. Mambo Gozon If you know Simpsons, you know Tito Puente. Known as the king of Latin music, Puente was one of the foremost figures of the mambo craze that swept America during the 1950s. His best-selling and best-regarded album, Dance Mania, features the track Mambo Gazon. Which is spoofed by Mambo de Battle. This time they got the genre right. Penguinism. 1980s Penguinism is the first and only album Shigesato Itoi released under his own name. The tracks therein were penned and sung by Itoi, however, their compositions were crafted by his friends in the music industry. Yes, among that lineup are Suzuki and Yano. It seems that the Mother series creator has a fondness for the flightless bird. Amid his bibliography are the alternative manga Penguin Rice and the children's book Goodbye Penguin. Perhaps that is why, as revealed by the encyclopedia mother, Ninten is an avid Penguin fan. Spinal Tap Sign 
In the English localization of Earthbound, a fresh breeze movement Cyan Onet implores, don't break the wind of change. This is a nod from Marcus Limblum to Break Like the Wind, an album by the fictional band Spinal Tap. T-Rex Items Another reference added in the English version. Two weapons names were changed to the T-Rex's bat and the zip gun, alluding to the rock band T-Rex and their album Bolin Zip Gun. Taiko Onuki The singer of the love theme on the Mother 3 Plus album and a preeminent figure of the Japanese city pop genre. Taiko Onuki started carving out a name for herself during the 70s in her native metropolis of Tokyo. Her music is noteworthy for, aside from being really good, pioneering the integration of Western pop elements into Japanese music. Speaking of the West, the rise of Vaporwave during the previous decade has magnified overseas awareness of city pop artists like Onuki. Twinkle Elementary School when you notice it, you'll be kicking yourself for not realizing earlier. The background music for Lloyd's School incorporates the Westminster Quarters chime, which is used across East Asian countries as a school bell. Additionally, the track is remixed for Earthbound's file select theme, and the Game Boy Camera's credits theme. Unsettling Opponent in Mother 3 An arrangement of battle against an unsettling opponent appears in Mother 3 under the title Lucky's Room. It sounds decidedly less unsettling. Why Tanaka and Suzuki didn't return. The vast soundtrack planned for the third entry necessitated its designers to be in constant communication with a toy. This requirement would fatefully go unmet by both musicians. Tanaka had since joined Creatures Incorporated and had become preoccupied with writing songs for the upcoming Pokemon anime. As a result, Suzuki would instead pour his talents into various albums and film scores, having no desire to compose for Mother without Tanaka. In dire need of a replacement, Itoi assigned the role to Sakai after listening to the new recruit's demo CD. Needless to say, this turned out to be an excellent choice, with Itoi later expressing confidence in the musician's deep understanding of the game's story. Anna's Tadaima album. According to the Encyclopedia Mother, Anna was given a copy of Akiko Yano's album Tadaima by Yoshie, her pen pal in Japan. Even though she doesn't understand Japanese, Anna often listens to the record after coming home from school. This tidbit is an obvious plug for Itoi's friend, Tadaima being one of Yano's albums he contributed to. Anna's Encyclopedia entry also advertises the vocal album. We learned she plays Catherine Warwick on the piano for her Sunday school classmates. Cave of the Tale Theory There is a fan theory positing that the music heard in the God's Tale Caves is actually Maria trying and failing to remember the eight melodies. Even if this hasn't been outright confirmed somewhere, I like to think this is the case. Crazy Ken Band the arrangements of the DCMC songs featured on Mother 3 Plus were performed by none other than the Crazy Ken Band, a sizable rotating lineup of musicians helmed by Ken Yokoyama. They can be loosely categorized as a funk rock group, but like other musicians on this iceberg, they are versed in a variety of genres. Bronson quotes their hit single Tiger and Dragon if the player attempts to leave the campfire scene. <laughs> Thank you.
Eikichi Yazawa. During the 1970s, Japan experienced a revival in rockabilly music, not dissimilar to the comeback running concurrently in the West. Spearheading this zeitgeist were Beatles-inspired acts like Carol, whose bassist and vocalist Eikichi Yazawa rose to further prominence after the band's dissolution in 1975. Yazawa eventually crossed paths with Shigesato Itoi, who not only penned lyrics for the Rock and Roller's 1979 album Kiss Me Please, but also edited his autobiographical bestseller How to Be Big. This autobiography is listed as one of Teddy's favorite items, despite his inability to read Japanese. Furthermore, Yazawa's fan favorite song Traveling Bus is the namesake of the Runaway 5's Tour Bus and Mother 2. Speaking of namesakes, though I admit this could easily be reaching, I would postulate that Ninten's mother receives her name from the aforementioned Carol. Formidable Foes Many of the third game's battle songs have variations with more difficult sound battle beats. This is an unused variation of Formidable Foe from earlier on this iceberg. Nick Catman, a Moonrider song with lyrics written by Itoi, appearing on the band's 1996 album Bizarre Music For You. Most Moonrider songs don't seem to have an accompanying music video, but this one does. You can find an upload online with translated lyrics provided by Clyde Mandolin. Mother 3's item guy, who wears a Nick cap, is a tribute to the tune. Louis Philippe. Louis Philippe is the pseudonym for French singer-songwriter Philippe Auclair, who provided lead vocals and guitar work on Flying Man for his friend Keiichi Suzuki. He was heavily involved with the short-lived L Records, whose output flopped in its native Britain, but took off in Japan. Indeed, it would be chamber pop icons such as Philippe, Bacharach, and the Beach Boys who planted the seeds for the Shibuya K genre that took 90s Japan by storm. Nowadays, he's famous in Europe for being a football, or if you will, soccer, journalist. Mambo Number 5 Dog In the Japanese version, a dog in Toto howls, Ooh, Mambo! This is a nod to Perez Prado's Mambo Number no. 5, which is known informally in Japan as the Ooh, Mambo song. No! Please note that Mother 2 predates the Lou Bega song you are likely more familiar with. Memory of Siren This track plays in the twins' house before the time skip. I placed it lower than Is Anyone There because it is not accessible through the sound player. People's Instinctive Travels People's Instinctive Travels and the Paths of Rhythm is a Tribe Called Quest's debut album. Hip Tanaka stated that Earthbound's soundtrack shares a secret with the album. I'm guessing it's the fact that Luck of Lucian and Crossover Space and Time sampled La Marseillaise. Tanaka also cited the hip-hop group's music as influencing the game's battle and dungeon music. Shimmy Zmiz is an equivalent to Jimmy Smith. The name of the DCMC's keyboardist is a play on that of real-life jazz organist Jimmy Smith. Smith is an important figure in the evolution of jazz, having bolstered the popularity of the now ubiquitous Hammond organ. Song Cycle Van Dyke Park's 1976 album is a rejection of the British invasion and what he perceived to be its stranglehold on the American music industry. Song Cycle throws major genres of the Great Depression into a pot, stirs for half an hour, and serves the audience an eclectic soup of 60s art pop. As a piece of Americana, it is an excellent reference point for someone trying to tap into the country's soundscape. Keiichi Suzuki noted that Song Cycle's American humor, hazy sound, and touch of Ray Bradbury were key to his approach in composing beginnings. 
Parks also collaborated with the Beach Boys and Randy Newman, so of course Suzuki would know of him. Stretching Stretching is the final track on the 1979 album Reflection in Blue, recorded by Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. The opening of the song has been compared to battle against an unsettling opponent, But what's also noteworthy about it is that it was sampled by another song just a couple years before Earthbound's debut. In 1992, rap trio Diggable Planets released their breakout single Rebirth of Slick, Cool Like That, which would go on to top the Hot Rap Singles chart and receive gold certification. If Hip Tanaka was not already familiar with the bassline in its original Jazz Messengers context, then, given his love of hip-hop, he most certainly would have been exposed to it through the jazz rap hit. Take Away slash The Lure of Salvage The debut solo album of Ecstasy's Andy Partridge outsold all other Ecstasy albums in Japan. It should come as little surprise, then, that Suzuki claimed the record's experimentation with dub as being present in the games. While on the subject of Partridge and Suzuki, the two are great friends and have collaborated on more than one occasion. The Moon Riders album Psycho no Bansan opens with Partridge in the role of an MC, introducing each member of the band. Then there was the time the duo worked on Saiko Suzuki's Keiichi's Then Wife album Studio Romantic. Tessie theme is cut off. You do not hear the full version of Tessie while traveling on the monster's back. A permanent loop that would play after Tessie departs goes unheard. There are a few other songs like this in Earthbound. The Two Jeremies On the vocal album, there are two choir boys from the St. Paul's Cathedral Choir named Jeremy. Jeremy Budd is the lead singer on All That I Needed Was You, Jeremy Holland Smith sang Being Friends alongside Warwick. I'm guessing both sang on eight melodies with the rest of the Cathedral Choir. Although they later claim that the choir was asked for two of their best tenors, I can't help but wonder if a bit of cheeky fun was being had in providing two choristers with the same name. Anyway... Following the vocal album's release, Jeremy Budd continued to amass renown for his vocal prowess. 1991 would see him perform as a boy soloist on Paul McCartney's Liverpool Oratorio, because you can't escape the Beatles on this iceberg. By the time he entered adulthood, Bud had already sung at countless venues in England and abroad. A highly sought-after vocalist, he has regularly performed with his country's finest choirs and conductors. Despite mostly singing the work of classical and Baroque musicians, Bud has also been a member of London Voices, a choir who has lent their voices to the scores of films such as the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Meanwhile, Jeremy Holland Smith chose the path of a prolific composer and conductor, his extensive career spanning multiple art mediums. He has written scores for numerous BBC programs and has led orchestras at the company's prestigious promenade concerts. In the field of theatre, among Holland Smith's most notable contributions are compositions for Will Tuckett's ballets The Secret Garden and Changing Light. Perhaps his most mainstream work is on Illumination's 2016 film Sing, conducting the music of frequent collaborator Joby Tolbutt. You Make Me Feel Brand New The jukebox song Blessing is said to pay homage to this 1974 gold single by the Stylistics, a Philadelphia soul group. My love, I'll never find the words, my love. To tell you how I feel, my
830. A live album by the jazz fusion band Weather Report. Tanaka noted Joe Zavinal's keyboard tones and techniques on the album as influencing the music of Mother, as well as the band's use of dissonance and percussion instrumentation. It was thanks to Weather Report, moreover, that Tanaka became enamored with the worlds of Latin and African American music. Consequences Released in 1977, this eccentric concept album by Kevin Godley and Low Cream centers around the divorce proceedings of a couple who, unbeknownst to them, are in the midst of a meteorological catastrophe. More to the point, the album was conceived to showcase the rock duo's Gizmotron invention. When connected to a guitar, the effects device would rub the instrument's strings to create synthesizer-like noises. It is used in the album to replicate the sounds of various instruments, in effect providing Godly and Cream with their own mini orchestra. The usage of the Gizmotron and consequences impacted Suzuki's usage of vibrato and earthbound soundtrack. As he toy once guessed, it might have been a first for video game music. Delam Theme Origin Between the releases of Mother 1 and Mother 2, Keiichi unveiled his 1991 solo album Suzuki White Report. Included on it is the track Words, Colors, Noises, and Booms, the main melody of which was directly lifted for The Traveler Can Hear the Song. Jagatara, a funk rock band that ran from 1979 to 1990, disbanding after the tragic death of their bombastic frontman Edo Akemi. Early on in the band's career, when their musical stylings leaned more towards punk than reggae, the shock rock antics of Ademi made them darlings of the Japanese underground scene. Saxophonist Masami Shinoda and trombonist Yoichi Murata, courtesy of Jagatara, performed on the vocal album's rendition of Falling Love and... By the way, if you would like to learn more about Jagatara, I recommend Pad Chennington's YouTube video as a starting point. Killing Time Here we have another Japanese band whose discography is largely relegated to the 1980s. Eventually consisting of seven members, Killing Time was the result of Bun Itakura, Masato Mato Fuji, and Kazuto Shimizu wanting to experiment musically and, well, kill time. They have been described as a prog rock or jam band, but as you might anticipate by now, it is difficult to pin them down to just one genre. Killing Time also provided instrumentation for Falling Love and, but unlike Jagatara, every band member lent their talents. Fun fact, the vocals you hear on that track are those of Shimizu's wife, Reichi. Lalo Rodriguez from Puerto Rico comes this salsa singer, whose music is known for its romantic and at times racy lyrics. Such is the case with Ben, Debórame Otra Vez, which saw extensive radio play in the summer of 1988 and became his most representative song. The album it belongs to, Un Nuevo Despertar, was put forth by Tanaka as an example of the salsa works that shaped the themes of Foresight and the Photo Man. Life's an inner turn radius. Nairin Sadayo Jin Sewa in Japanese. The name of the flying limousine music is a spoof of Takashi Hosokawa's Enka hit Nanibushiwa Dayo Jin Sewa, Life's a Sob Story. As far as I know, there's no single clear cut translation of Nairinsa, but it is a driving term that refers to the gap between the paths of a turning vehicle's inner wheels. Certainly something the chauffeur of a limousine should know, at least in Japan. While on the topic of Takashi Hosokawa, I should mention that Shigesatsu Itoi wrote the lyrics for his 1991 single, Ouenka Ikimasu. 
That same year, said single was used in now fondly remembered commercials for Keating Beer. We Western mother fans may be aware of Itoi's status as a renaissance man, but we do not always grasp the true form of, I mean, the sheer range and depth of his influence on Japanese pop culture. Linda Henrik Brought in early during the production process of Beginnings, Linda Henrik wrote the lyrics of the vocal album. And what a fascinating life she's had! Born and raised in California, Henrik moved to Japan in the early 70s after traveling abroad with music groups such as the Young Americans Association. There, she acquired a prolific career of transcribing albums into Japanese, often those published by Warner and Atlantic Records. But she did not limit herself to translating the work of others. By the end of the 1980s, Henrik had penned her own lyrics for all sorts of media. Rock tunes, anime insert songs, motion picture themes, and of course, video game soundtracks. 2010 marked her relocation back to the US, but she continues to work with the Japanese music industry. Before we move on to the next topic, I would like to list a few of her more interesting lyrical contributions. Songs on Jackie Chan's album Love Me, Godzilla Love Theme, the ending theme for Return of Godzilla, the English version of Lilia's theme from East 2, and English versions of songs appearing in Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory. Michael Nyman an esteemed English composer and musicologist, Nyman is responsible for the arrangement of eight melodies on the vocal album. Among his claims to fame are his experimentation and analysis of musical minimalism, a term he likely coined, and his lengthy list of compositions for opera and cinema. Although he has been closely associated with film director Peter Greenaway, his most awarded score was that of the 1993 film The Piano, though Americans might be more familiar with his music through Gattaca. quote-unquote official names for Mother 2 songs. As was common with games of its era, many of Earthbound's tracks do not have official titles. Fans have had to come up with their own names for them. However, the Mother 2 and Mother 1 2 soundtracks do provide titles for some of the tracks. For instance, Threed's post-zombie theme is called One Day For Sure. And what we call Gigas is Wounded is entitled, Please Disappear. Note that these are merely unofficial translations of the Japanese track titles. You can thus find other renditions of the titles online. Pink Cloud The 6th Year Sanctuary location receives its name from a Japanese 80s rock band. Pink Cloud consisted of a trio of talented musicians, drummer Johnny Yoshinaga, bassist Masayoshi Louise Louis Kabe, and guitarist Hisato Char Takenaka. I assume more players in Japan caught this reference. Shja Dara Par Do you remember the previously mentioned Shibuya K genre, which was inspired by the likes of Louis Philippe? Rap trio Shta Dara Par took that sound and combined it with that of their hip-hop influences, securing a spot within the pantheon of 90s Japan. SDP also has a reputation as die-hard gamers. MC Bose playtesting Earthbound on behalf of Ape for a strategy guide. Perhaps as thanks, the group's explosive hit Konya wa Boogie Back is name-dropped by the sign outside the Chaos Theater. Their love of video games is further evidenced by Game Boys, which was reworked for a commercial advertising a link to the past, and more recently, a remix of the Fire Emblem theme alongside the rapper Daoko. Slang Tang Rhythm Slang Tang is perhaps the first rhythm, that is to say, backing instrumentation, in reggae to fully comprise of digitized sounds rather than acoustic. With the help of dub master King Jammy, the rhythm made its debut on Wayne Smith's 1985 single Under Me Slang Tang. and went on to be incorporated in, quite literally, countless other songs. 
Around the 24 second mark in battle against a mobile opponent, Slang Tang can be heard. I'm not familiar with reggae or dub, so there may be many other pre-existing rhythms in the mother games that I missed. Sly and Robbie Drummer Sly Dunbar and bassist Robbie Shakespeare have played backup for pretty much every musician worth noting in Jamaica and then some. Hip Tanaka had the good fortune of meeting Sly and Robbie through excursions with the Shampoos, an intermittent Osakan band who has opened for the duo at least twice. Shakespeare's bass playing would prove to be exemplary when the time came to compose Earthbound's pyramid music. Sound of Siren is a play on words. It's a play on The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. This is more obvious in Japanese as Siren, siren. is one character off from Silence. Silence. Stack Ridge. Formed in 1969, this Bristol-based rock band is one of several groups who, according to Tanaka, give off the aura of the Beatles. They even managed to have George Martin produce their third album, The Man in the Bowler Hat. What sets the Stackridge sound apart from the Fab Fours, though, are its comparatively larger traces of prog and folk rock and its smatterings of trad jazz. These musical tastes shape the mother soundscape in their own right. Glenn Tommy, who greatly assisted in the production of the vocal album, would interestingly go on tour with Stackridge starting in 2007. He appears on their final album, 2009's A Victory for Common Sense, providing backing vocals and instrumentation. Suudaragushi If you were alive in 60s Japan, you would inevitably hear of the Crazy Cats, a comedy troupe jazz band hybrid. And if you heard of the Crazy Cats, there's a good chance that you'd be familiar with Suudaragushi. Released in 1961, this hit single lampoons the life of an irresponsible weaselly salaryman who squanders his pay on worldly vices. Not only did the tune thrust the group into the public consciousness, it also became Hitoshi Ueki's de facto theme song. Nearly three decades later, Ueki would return to the spotlight with Sudara Densetsu, a medley of classic Crazy Cat songs, including, of course, Sudara Bushi. <laughs> Perhaps because of this 90s resurgence, the Wooly Shambler and Wild and Wooly Shambler enemies received their Japanese names from the chorus's nonsense lyrics. Wanted, Shime Tahai. Several layers earlier, I mentioned how the reference to My Generation on the Wanted poster was a concession on behalf of Mandolin. That's because an entirely different song was referenced in the Japanese script, one which Western audiences would largely be unfamiliar with. The poster instead quoted Wanted, Shime Tahai, the smash hit from idol duo Pink Lady. Wanted! In this song, which dominated Japanese airwaves in 1977, the narrator states her intent to hunt down the man who has stolen her heart. Although a wanted poster is a more fitting fixture in proximity to a sheriff's office, Mandolin deserves praise for conceiving a suitably amusing replacement. Yabi Yu Real name Vivian Jackson, Yabi Yu was an esteemed, albeit often overlooked, reggae artist. An outsider to the Jamaican music scene, he distinguished himself from his peers as a result of his Christian beliefs, evident in his song titles. The notably collaborative nature of the scene nonetheless afforded Yabi plenty of opportunities to produce for other musicians during the later 20th century. Conquering Lion, his breakaway hit of 1972, would be transformed by the legendary King Tubby into Conquering Dub. It's this version of the song that is unabashedly imitated by the aforementioned hospital theme.
Thousand Voices. You know that section of being friends on the album with the chanting that comes out of left field? Those chants are credited to some individual or group under the moniker of A Thousand Voices. There doesn't seem to be any information on them online, at least any that I could find. Complicating matters is the fact that the liner notes bear a couple of misspellings and non-standard romanizations of names. A Thousand Voices could be a direct translation of some obscure Japanese band. One of the lyrics in the Beatles song, The Fool on the Hill, reads, The man of a thousand voices talking perfectly loud. Which leads me to wonder if the singing credit is partially or wholly some sort of inside joke on behalf of Suzuki or another staff member. Blockbuster WOW! It is speculated that the wow! voice clip that plays after confirming all options for a new game in Earthbound is taken from a circa 1992 Blockbuster commercial. Blockbuster video. Wow, what a difference. Thanks again to How Is This A Name for this potential find. Blood and Chocolate In a roundtable discussion from 2018, Itoi disclosed that the iconic red box art of the Mother Games is a homage to the album cover of Elvis Costello's Blood and Chocolate. Not sure why he waited until relatively recently to mention that. Bluegrass Mall Trolling As I said earlier, much of Earthbound's music lacks official titles. Bluegrass Mall Trolling is an old and obscure fan name for humoresque of a little dog. And when I mean old, I mean over two decades old, in the days of the original Starman.net forums. I'll provide a link to the tracklist it ostensibly originates from in the description. Nowadays, you are much more likely to see fans call the track BUY SOMETHING, WILL YA? DCMC GIGAS THEME A rather unnerving unused Mother 3 track that's sometimes called the GIGAS THEME by fans. In fact, it is slowed down audio of OJ saying, 1, 2, 3, 5. You can hear this audio in some of the DCMC songs that are in the finalized game. Destiny or Enlightenment Leitmotif. I'm not quite sure what the best name for this leitmotif is, so consider these placeholders. I have identified at least three instances of the motif's presence in the Earthbound soundtrack. The first time it can be heard is in Buzz Buzz's Prophecy, when the insectoid tasks Ness with setting out to thwart Gigas. It is also found in Welcome to Your Sanctuary, playing throughout the game as the eight power spots are reclaimed. Lastly, it appears in Sea of Eden, as Ness's character arc comes to a close. This leitmotif serves as a thematic throughline that signifies Ness's destiny to deepen his connection to the planet and develop in both power and perspective. Update: I have also spotted it in Ness Awakens from the Nightmare. Lumine Hall Act Get off the train at the JR Shinjuku station, head to the south exit, and in no time, you'll be face to face with Lumina 2 of the Lumina Shopping Complex. If you were to visit this building nowadays, you would find on its 7th floor, Lumine the Yoshimoto, the largest comedy venue in Tokyo. From 1987 to 2000, however, the auditorium went by the name of Lumine Hall Act. A cornucopia of events were housed at the rental hall. Beauty pageants, troupe performances, celebrity panels, and of course, concerts. Acts who have graced its stage include jazz fusion group T-Square and American guitarist Lee Rittenauer, as well as in-house rock bands for game developers like Falcom and SNK. Speaking of video games, it's possible that the real-world Lumina Hall was the namesake of Earthbound 7th Your Sanctuary. Nada Soul Soul most famously recorded by Rimi Natsukawa in 2001, Nada Soul Soul, Great Tears Are Spilling in Okinawan, is a song about remembering a loved one who has passed away.
In Mother 3's Japanese script, the ghostly pianist refers to the song in the last line of Ragtime Osohei. Origin of Cafe Jukebox Music Inside the Dirty Cafe, there is a jukebox that will randomly play one of five songs when paid. Some claim that these songs are carryovers from the cancelled 64DD game, although I cannot find a quote to support this. Fairies does sound markedly similar to the original Tasmili Village theme for what it's worth. What we know for fact is that Shogo Sakai wrote White for Snowcap Mountain before being informed of the recurring snowman theme. The Pig Mask theme was the main Mother 3 theme. The theme of the Pig Mask army was written by Sakai early into development, back during the 64DD days, and was planned to be the game's main theme. According to a toy, it was decided in the December of 2005 that an extremely important scene needed a different song to better convey what the developers intended. So the love theme was composed late into Mother 3's development. Sakai. Saikai, Reunion, is a 1960s song performed by jazz singer Kazuko Matsuo. In it, the singer expresses her love for a prisoner decried as a villain by the public. The relationship between Facade and his pet mouse was inspired by the song, according to a toy. Seaside Bound The Tigers were one of many 60s Japanese bands that arose in response to the Beatles during what is known as the Group Sounds era. They were successful enough to star in multiple films, one of which being 1968 sci-fi comedy, The Tigers, The World is Waiting for Us. It tells the story of Princess Sylvie of Andromeda, who, after crash landing on Earth, meets the band and becomes enamored with lead singer Kenji Sawada, stage name Julie. This turn of events comes to a head during the film's climax, in which Sylvie holds him captive in her UFO. Knowing that powerful musical sound waves disrupt the spaceship, Julie requests the diegetic audience and then the real-life audience to join in the Tiger's performance of Seaside Bound. Itoi has attested that Earthbound Beginnings pays homage to the film, and this is evident through the nature of Gigas' defeat not by brute force, but by singing. Furthermore, the use of audience participation in The World is Waiting for Us likely shaped the sequel's climax, particularly the player's role in exterminating the alien monstrosity. Unused Earthbound Compositions It is, of course, not uncommon for songs to be scrapped during the production of a video game. In the case of Earthbound, limitations in memory space continually restricted the soundtrack size, even after the cartridge capacity was expanded, first to 12, and then 24 megabits. This was likely done at least in part to accommodate the overflowing input of the zealous composers. Suzuki claims that he wrote over 100 songs for the game, although a great deal of them ultimately went unused and have yet to resurface. Unused Popular Music Club Sign there is unused text in Earthbound seemingly meant for a member's needed sign. This sign goes on to list a variety of musicians and welcomes fans of their music to join the popular music club, Easy Listening Music Club in the Japanese script. While the English translation invents a good portion of the posted names, the original text seems to exclusively name-check actual musical acts. They are Carcass, Cathedral, Napalm Death, Mineko Nishikawa, The Moon Riders, Shita Darapar, Kinky Kids, Bjork, Takashi Hosokawa, and Horenso. That last one has yet to be verified as a real band. 
In any case, I think the joke is that none of these people produce what can be called easy listening. Voice and Dungeon Man's Theme Audio of Shigesatu Itoi singing to himself was recorded and mixed into the cacophonous track that plays while inside Dungeon Man. As with, this was done without Itoi's knowledge and was later revealed to him by Tanaka. Apparently, he was singing the phrase, Let's far for man. Let's far for man? He doesn't know what it means either. Earthbound 64 Concert Following the cancellation of the 64DD entry, a chamber concert was held in secret for the game's staff. It featured several songs from the cancelled game, and was the first time Shogo Sakai conducted an orchestra. Tragically, this concert will most likely remain as lost media. Voices and Gigas Tracks Looking in forums and YouTube comment sections, it is evident that many fans claim to hear voices in Gigas' battle music. As for myself, that distinct rhythm on display in Gigas' intimidation reminds me of the phrase, Get me out of here now! These claims are in all likelihood just the result of auditory pareidolia, a tendency we have to ascribe words to jumbled sound. Unidentified Gigas Sampling Gigas' battle music uses a few of Earthbound's 173 samples. To my knowledge, there is not a consensus as to the origins of these samples, but please correct me if I am wrong. I have a hunch, as I said much earlier, that the wailing noise and Gigas' fatally wounded might be Miyamoto's guitar. If someone out there is determined to identify the samples, I would also suggest the White Album or Loveless as starting points. Itoi's Late Night Keyboard in addition to the band's impact on Earthbound soundtrack, Hip Tanaka noted My Bloody Valentine's similarity to something called Itoi's Late Night Keyboard. What he was referring to eluded me when I first typed up this iceberg, but after further digging, I believe I now have the answer. Tanaka recalls paying a visit to Shigesatsu Itoi's office just before development of Earthbound Beginnings had properly commenced. Already, the game director had found himself terribly busy grappling with the pre-production phase. There was a tiny keyboard in the office which Itoi played that night, tiredly pressing the clavature. To Tanaka, the languid slurred sound that was produced greatly resembled the swaying pitches of vibrato endemic to shoegaze. This sound, he attested, is at the root of mother music. You can hear it in the music of Queen Mary's Magicant and the Sea of Eden. The eight melodies are taken from the Close Encounters theme. A personal theory of mine. Itoi is a known fan of Steven Spielberg, who directed, alongside numerous other famous films, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. If you've seen that film, the parallels to Earthbound Beginnings should be obvious. The protagonists are drawn to a towering landform surrounded by paranormal activity. Both works culminate in humans interacting with alien life through music. Straight to the point, the Close Encounters theme's main musical phrase sounds uncannily similar to the first and second of the eight melodies, and shares the exact same number of notes. I'm not sure if this potential musical reference has been confirmed somewhere, but I would not be surprised to find out that such is the case. Every Runaway 5 song is... a reference? Every track associated with the Runaway 5 pays tribute to a pre-existing song, typically one that has been covered by the Blues Brothers. Dead End Chaos Theater references Robert Johnson's Sweet Home Chicago. The Daily Show introduces a horn riff that references Shake a Tail Feather by the Five Dutones. This riff is incorporated into later Runaway 5 tracks. Kristen, 
Runaway 5 left the building, references Rubber Biscuit by the Chips. Or possibly Lady Madonna by the Beatles. Lady Madonna, children at your feet. Wonder how you manage to make ends meet. Runaway 5 on the move, and by extension, Runaway 5 to the rescue, reference the guitar riff from Neil Young's Hey Hey My My. The tracks may alternatively be derivative of Otis Redding's I Can't Turn You Loose. <laughs> Runaway 5's final performance references The Changeling by The Doors. While not a Runaway 5 song, Get on the Bus references Henry Mancini's title theme for Peter Gunn. This is the end of my iceberg video. I hope that your interest was piqued in at least a few of the subjects tackled. The thing is though, this chart is by no means exhaustive. I'd estimate that what I've gone over constitutes less than half of what Mother Music provides for conversation. There were topics, especially earlier on, that I could have discussed more thoroughly. Also, not every last person who contributed to the official albums was included. John Paul Snegany lamentably didn't make the cut. This series and its soundtracks are truly the gifts that keep on giving, and I want to get people talking. I openly encourage others to make their own Mother Music Icebergs to share what they find intriguing. In any case, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.
Thank you.